what I mean by a seasonless wardrobe is that I have curated my wardrobe to work seamlessly throughout all the seasons. What I've been doing over the past couple of weeks is taking you through my own style transition since moving on to this boat. I think having a seasonless wardrobe is obviously very dependent on where you live, your own personal style, and you would have to tailor make it to you. This is very much a reflection of my personal lifestyle and the climate in which I live. Diving right in, what makes up the bulk of my wardrobe? It is the items that can be worn summer through winter. I'm talking about jeans and trousers, skirts and dresses, t-shirts, tank tops, layering items, men's button-down shirts, blazers and lightweight jackets, and some knitwear. I'm definitely making sure that the bulk of my wardrobe are the seasonless items, the things that I'm wearing all year round. To be able to wear them all year round, they need to be able to be easily layered. Bottoms, for example, need to be able to go with a range of shoes. I need to be flexible with them. This means I favor a wide leg more often than not. I do have some that aren't, but in general, I like wide leg jeans, wide leg trousers. This allows me to play with wrapping a sandal around there or having them look good with a pointy toe boot in the winter. I definitely feel that skinnier trousers for me are quite limiting when it comes to wearing them throughout the seasons. I struggle, let's say, to wear an open toe sandal with a very skinny trouser or something like that. So for the purpose of versatility and my own personal style and what I like to wear, how I like to play with proportion, this is important to me when I'm thinking about my bottom half, my trousers, my jeans. As I said, tops need to be able to be easily layered. That means fuss-free shirting and fuss-free layers like tank tops, t-shirts and that sort of thing. When it comes to shirts, I do not have any blouses, let's say, with frills and spills or billowing sleeves. If it is a large sleeve, it's just an oversized shirt that can easily be shoved into a jacket or a blazer, easily worn under knitwear. Anything that's got bells and whistles that could look or feel a bit fussy and uncomfortable to layer, I make sure I steer clear of those. Skirts and dresses is something that I have never really been that into, but lately I decided that I really wanted to play in that area, so I invested in a few skirts and I love this. I was unaware that they are so versatile. Popping a pair of tights underneath and wearing a pair of knee-high boots really makes these so appropriate for the winter. And I also love that it brings an element of freshness or a little bit of freedom to a winter look, as opposed to getting bogged down and feeling so stuck in that rut of wearing jeans all the time in winter or trousers all the time in winter. It really can be a sense of relief. And it makes me feel quite fabulous when I'm wearing a fun winter look that is based around a skirt or a dress. Blazers, all year round, any time of day, I'm here for it. I have a range of blazers from lightweight to heavier ones and so not all of them would I wear all year round but I make space for them in my wardrobe because I know it's an item that I love. Knitwear is a no-brainer. Often it's chilly in the evenings or the mornings even in the summer and a lot of the time rather than put the heating on the boat if it is a little bit cold in the summer I like to be able to put on a cozy knit just for an hour or two until it warms up. But knitwear and even sweatshirts would fall into this category is something that I always have on hand even through the summer just to drape around my shoulders. For the items that are not worn all year round, I definitely try and limit them in my wardrobe. That means that if the space is filled, I would have to essentially sell that item on if I wanted to get a new one. Things like a heavyweight wool coat. I've got a long length, very thick, oversized heavyweight coat. I do not need a new one. I got it in black, so it kind of goes with everything. And being that this item is only worn two to three months of the year, if I wanted to change this one out, I would have to wait for it to get worn out or sell it on and get a new one. Those are the things that I'm very specific about keeping to a minimum in my wardrobe. On the flip side, with summer items, things like shorts, I also keep those to a minimum because again, I'm only really wearing them two to three months of the year. It's not worth me having an array of them. I likely won't get around to wearing them all in the season. Shoes, I will say, I bend the rules a little bit. I'm a bit of an addict and they really are the beginning and the end of an outfit for me. They give me a certain posture, they make me feel a certain way. I really spend a lot of time 
mostly when I'm putting an outfit together on the shoes that I'm wearing. I have lots of summer sandals. Luckily, those are easy to store on a boat, so I shove them everywhere. And when it comes to winter boots and that, I like to have a range of colors, a range of textures. I really like to play there. Now, let's get into those things that I really have to be conscious of not allowing into my wardrobe, and I'll tell you why. Exhibit A is the first example of something that I am glad I have in my wardrobe and I do plan to wear but I'm definitely conscious that I'm not going to be investing in any pieces like this anytime soon. I have camis and tank tops and tops like this that are this kind of shape for layering, but what makes this one difficult for me to wear, and literally, as in I've never worn it, it still has the tags on, it's the peplum for me. I thought this would be a go-to kind of going out top in the summer that I would wear with jeans or a pair of light linen trousers or something flowy like a skirt on the bottom and I could really have a cool feminine vibe with it maybe drape a blazer over my shoulders. But what generally happens is when it comes to those moments, I still reach for a button down shirt or I'm wearing a bralette top with a shirt over the top and I never really reach for the specific piece. I just somehow overlook it all the time. Anytime I'm gonna get lured into buying something or investing in something that's difficult to layer. I'm gonna remember this baby and uh, this could be likely an item that I'm gonna sell if I don't end up wearing it. Or I'll just keep because I love it and wear it once or twice, but it's one of those ones where you do kind of feel guilty that you made a mistake and it's not quite fitting in to your wardrobe. Another one for me is prints. I limit the amount of prints in my wardrobe for sure because I do find them hard to style and hard to layer and I get bored of them and I don't reach for them that often. This shirt actually gets a lot of leg work during the summer and it's a favourite of mine. It's a very oversized men's vintage silk shirt that I found in a charity shop on the cheap and I wear it all the time. It's so great. It doesn't require much washing. I just steam it a few times over the season and it is so, so fabulous for easy breezy summer looks. I really love this. However, I'm not allowing myself another one. So if I come across any kind of beachy, kind of printed Hawaiian style shirt, as much as I love them and I love that summer vibe, I have one. If I got another one, I wouldn't wear this one as much. So I limit that because I am only wearing this one or two months of the year when it is very high summer. One is enough. I'm just going to wear this one to death. Colour is something that I also limit. This is a fabulous men's pink blazer that I managed to snap up through my work. It's a press sample and I love it so much. It fits really well and is quite a statement. And I do find this color quite easy to style. It's not too specific. But again, it's not something that I reach for on the regular. It's also not a blazer that I'm layering up really in the winter because of this shade of pink. I could get creative with it, but I'm prone to just stick to what I know. So it doesn't get that much leg work. Maybe I'll wear it once or twice a year. And when you're living on a boat with a very tiny wardrobe, it's taking up a lot of space for something that doesn't really get worn. It's not like I have no color whatsoever, but what I like to do is keep my color for my footwear, my jewellery, my earrings, if I want that pop of colour, I'll bring it in in that way. Makeup works as well, an eyeshadow, a lipstick. So I like to play in those areas because those are things I can easily change and I don't feel like that's such a heavy investment for me. When it comes to colour though, I do dabble. I'm not without any other shades than black, grey, white or navy. I do enjoy to play with a bit of colours. This is another fabulous men's blaze that I love. It is a linen and it is just so great in the summer but it's a nice tone and thickness that I can wear it into cooler months as well. What I've started doing is because I realize I love this color so much, when I see things secondhand, this is a vintage St. Michael shirt from Marks and Spencers that I picked up at a charity shop. It's a silk one and I realized that these tones will go quite well together. So I definitely lean towards neutral colors and if I am adding something to my wardrobe and it is colorful, I'm thinking about what else it's going to go with and are the tones all going to work together. A good tip for me is to not get anything too bright or too specific or too printed or too bold. If I want color, I keep it in tones that I can really mix in with the other neutral 
neutrals in my wardrobe and I keep the brights for my accessories when I really feel like I need a pop. I hope you enjoyed seeing and hearing about my seasonless wardrobe. I think this is a really great way if you're looking to slow down and really get the most enjoyment out of your wardrobe. I see a lot of videos out there about changing over your wardrobe for the season so packing things away when it's winter, bringing out a summer wardrobe but I really feel like the weather is so unpredictable sometimes. I like to have everything on hand just in case. Also that thinking or that sense of organization is not an option for me being that I live on a tiny boat. I see all my wardrobe all the time and when I say see it's hidden in weird drawers and cupboards and things like that I've had to be really savvy about it but I have all my wardrobe accessible all the time. That means I need most of the pieces to be able to be picked up whatever season it is. I don't want the items in my wardrobe to be too limiting. So this is a good way that I've been able to curate a beautiful wardrobe for myself that really works Works hard for me and where I get the most wear out of all the pieces that I've invested in. Subscribe to the channel if you're enjoying hearing about how I came to find my own personal style and how I've curated a wardrobe that really works for me. Give this video a like if you enjoyed it and meet me in the comments if you want to share some thoughts of your own. Join me next time I'll be showing you how I've come up with uniforms that really work for my lifestyle. This is for days when I'm finding it difficult to get dressed and it's really given me a good grounding and a good base of go-to outfit combos that really help me get dressed effortlessly. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.